Welcome to Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup. I'm your host, Jason Bland, and tonight we will have guest Sir Blake Sinclair, a real sir. He's the author of the Golden Book series, Dare to Imagine, Beyond Imagination, his newest book, A New Beginning, An Antidote to Civilization. But we have so much to talk about this guy. We only have him for an hour, and I don't know if we'll get phone lines in with him tonight uh, because we only have him for an hour, because this guy's led a very interesting life. His dad... Uh, has some uh, had uh, some experiences with Roswell. He's had some ET contact experiences. We he, we're going to get into Chinese. We could get into Chinese astrology. There's so many paranormal soupy things to get into with our guest Sir Blake Sinclair tonight. We're gonna let it go. I mean, it's been ET contact month pretty much for us for the last what three or four episodes we've had contactees and. No different with Sir, Sir Blake Sinclair. We're going to get into some of the alien topics tonight as well. And, and after the hour with him, uh, we will open up the phone lines for you guys to uh, have that conversation, open lines, whatever we want to talk about. Uh, but it might be a shorter show tonight because, you know, I don't know. It all depends on you how many call in and my phone line. <laughs> I'm having an issue with the phone line, so hopefully that works tonight. Otherwise, it'll be a really short show. And then uh, next Sunday, we're a little questionable if we're going to have a show next Sunday. I, I'll let you guys know later this week if we're going to have a show or not. Have some stuff coming up. Guest rescheduled. I know, I know. You don't want to hear about it. But we got a lot of weird to get you in the real life of weird, so let's go ahead and get rolling on into it. Welcome to another night of Paranormal Soup. As I said before, I'm your host, Jason Bland. Our guest tonight, Sir Blake Sinclair, will join us after the World Wide Web of Weird after our first commercial break. Joining me, as usual, is my beautiful co-host, Jamie D. How you do tonight, Jamie? Doing well, thank you. Glad to have you here, and I uh, hope you had a good uh, solar eclipse. We're all here and alive, mm -hmm. as predicted by, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe some other people didn't predict <laughs> that it was. We, like, we survived yeah. the rapture. Yeah, yeah. I wonder about that lady. I don't know if we talked about it last Sunday, the lady that gave the $300 tip to the waitress saying, oh, I don't need it. I get raptured tomorrow. <laughs> she wants her $300 tip back. I don't know. I don't know. But we survived the uh, solar apocalypse, whatever. We're here. But there's definitely some weirdness that happened during the, uh, the solar apocalypse. So we got a lot to roll into the World Wide Web of Weird. So let's go ahead and roll into the World Wide Web of Weird.
tonight on the World Wide Web of Weird. Of course, we're going to talk about all the solar eclipse weirdness tonight, but uh, the first article is a big a bunch of I told you so's. Total solar eclipse generates series of bizarre conspiracy theories. At least that's the unexplained mysteries headline for it. <laughs> you know, everybody's ripping on anybody who was trying to say anything weird was going to happen, like Alex Jones and all that. You know, we just live in that time. We're, just, we're, we're on our, our toes waiting for something crazy to happen all the time. Doomsday, all the time. Fear, 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 fear. So I'm kind of glad they're getting their I told you so. For those listening on the Paranormal Soup Radio Network, we are a uh, live webcast out on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. What is wrong? I can't even talk. Uh, if you want to watch, you can come watch. That sounds weird to say it that way. Or if you want to listen, I'll narrate as best as possible. And I got to try to run the World Wide Web of Weird. Rob is not here tonight. Um, so let me get the share screen up. I am way bad at this. All right, hold on one sec. Share screen coming in one, two, three. Oh, here we go. All right, there we go. And then let me pull up the article. So much smoother when Rob's here. <laughs> All right, yes. Nothing fancy here to show. Just the Unexplained Mysteries article. You see the uh, article? Yeah. Okay, all right. So as millions across North America gaze skyward uh, for a glimpse of the eclipse, there are others who remain convinced that the whole thing is either not what it seems or that it would be used for nefarious parties to achieve some shadowy, undisclosed uh, goals behind the scenes. A total solar eclipse occurs. Wait, 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 wait. I don't need to read this whole thing. What I want to talk about is, like, my, my wife even was paranoid. I hated the fear. Like, and I don't blame anybody for being on their tippy toes about this. Because we are in this constant state of media fear, and in, in, in not just our mainstream media, from the alternative media, that they, they were ready for something to happen. I thought if anything was going to happen, it would be the fake alien invasion. Like, and I get that. I mean, what a better time. My worry, like I said last Sunday, was I don't worry about some big staged event or anything like that. I just worry about what crazy people will do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I worried about, what what crazy people do. I'm in, you know, right here in Michigan City, and I don't, it had nothing to do with the solar eclipse, but dear God, my wife texted me like, there's sirens, you know what's going on. We didn't hear the sirens, we were outside, but we didn't hear them, it wasn't near us. But, you know, some guy got killed, shot, right as the solar eclipse was happening at a gas station over some girl, you know, like, I don't think it had anything to do with it, but people go crazy, do crazy things with these things. So that's what I worried about. Not some big government going to pull some shenanigans. I'm not saying the government won't pull some shenanigans or there won't be some secret alien, you know, or there's some fake alien invasion happening. I don't know. You know, but, you know, I, I just feel like we're all so on our tippy toes all the time. Like, we're ready for the next, we're waiting for the hammer to come down. Waiting for the shit to drop. I hate it. But there was some weirdness that happened. Uh, or maybe not, maybe shenanigans. It, you know, I, I'm up on the air on this one, too. So um, we got a couple of interesting videos from the eclipse. Um, one here has an article about it. Let me pause this really quick. Hold on, pause. Where's the pause? All right, hide that. Thank you. Um, this first one is, I think this was the one out of Texas, Arlington. They had a Coast to Coast article on it. Uh, Texas shows intriguing UFO flying around the clouds that quickly moving dark objects was cylindrical in shape. And while some have speculated it could be ET in origin, others have suggested more prosaic explanations. Shadow and aircraft flying by, no way. Uh, above the clouds, uh, this thing would be going fast. This is either somebody planned this for the eclipse and they all react. I can't play the audio from this one because it, it'll just echo if Jamie talks, but that's not the other reason. There's too much swearing. It feels real because people are like, what the beep is that, you know, in this audio? And you can find this at Coast to Coast AM, the first one. The other one, I don't remember where it was filmed at. I was given it by a friend of mine. Uh, and it's interesting too, but it could be a flare. I don't know. But let's let's look at this first one. Like, I wish I could play the audio so you could hear the reactions. But too many swear bombs for me to edit out. So they're all looking up. You know, the sun's through the clouds here, uh, getting ready to be eclipsed. And there's that. I don't think it's a shadow of an aircraft. You would hear it in the video. And I, like I said, I can't play the audio. It's silent, and it goes through pretty fast. I don't think that's an aircraft they saw. It's either shenanigans, CGI shenanigans, or it's something they saw. Have you seen this one, Jamie? Yeah. And I had almost gone with the shadow theory, because even though maybe it itself wasn't moving so fast, the angle of the shadow yeah. could have been like an illusion 
the way it hit, maybe making it look like that. But I thought part of the video I saw. Yeah, see. Here's the other one. This is another one. This is the you, one. With you the, see the it light. in the actual sky where it's not yeah. like part of the shadow. Here to play it again. Like I said, it could have been planned. It could have been like, oh, we're just going to film this up in the sky, make it like we're seeing something, and then we're going to CGI put it in. I'm not saying that's what happened at all. I'm mean, just saying that's the possibility. But your people's reactions to it. And this one, again, people's reactions are great, but they're swearing, which is what I would expect. What I, You know, that's, that's the realism of it. So it's this red light that just appears during the eclipse, and these guys look like they're wherever they're at. They're in the total part of it. Well, it doesn't say where it's at, but this has been going around. I didn't see this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it... Could be a player because somebody could have shot up something, drone. I don't know during the eclipse. I saw some pictures of it looking kind of red during the eclipse on some people's pictures, but not yeah. like that. Where it has the See, yeah. light. Yeah, that, and that's not the eclipse. Eclipse is above them, I believe, but they are uh, in the shadow of the eclipse at this moment, and. Uh, and it says lunar, but that somebody even commented solar eclipse, you know. <laughs> somebody tagged that Rob, but this is supposedly happened. There's a lot of these different videos going around. Are any of them that really happen? I don't know. But you know, that's just some of the weirdness that happened with the solar eclipse. But no, no rapture and you know, none of the other crazy stuff people thought, government coming down or whatever. Did, I don't know. Did you see the video of the three lights? How they had no. the three lights and then one was like a sphere? And the other one was kind of a disc shape, which it might be the same one NASA had said was like a Japanese satellite from a long time ago <laughs> that happened to pass right by. But I have a video clip I had from Wednesday. And during the eclipse, there's um, three three lights. I'll send I think I heard you. about it. Yeah, I think I heard about it, but I didn't get that one. So I'll have to see. Okay. Well, next up. We talked about Bigfoot last week about a guy asking if uh, he could legally shoot and kill a Bigfoot. <laughs> this one up, they might be asking that same question in the UK. Fears UK's own Bigfoot stalking National Park with a huge clue growing creature can't be human. Uh, Britain's very own Bigfoot may be roaming one of our national par uh, parks, terrified lookers say. Fishermen making late night visits to the idyllic lake in South Downs have revealed that a growing a growling, sorry, growling creature patrols the area and has been spotted escaping down a dangerous hill. No human would dare venture that incline, with anglers concluding the strange noises and bumps in the night are the result of an elusive creature. Members of the Cryptid Paranormal Investigation Group on Facebook observed multiple instances of close calls with a creature so evil that it made, it made the fishermen uh, uh, up sticks and depart straight away. What makes it, it doesn't mean it's evil. They're just scared of what they don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't say stick around. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's evil. Is a bear evil? My ground claimed, I felt incredibly on edge, and it was a feeling I can honestly say I'd never experienced before or since. It, was, it really was as if something was watching me, and I was not welcome. Fellow group member Michael Bindle says he experienced a similar feeling when fishing on the banks of the UK National Park, adding he encountered something large running on what he thinks was two legs on the opposite bank in the darkness. Those unnerving stomps in the wilderness prompted Michael to pack up and uh, uh, scamper off. He felt the hairs on my arm. He said, I felt the hairs on my arm stand up. I was uh, dozing on my chair next to the road when I was woken up by a loud, a loud growl from the opposite bank. Uh, the pair noted that the growling beast had made its way to, uh, to and from the area from such a steep incline, no human could dare to tackle it without risk of serious injury. Mike said, I think, though, most of the standout thing is the terrain being covered in the dark. It sounds dangerous enough to attempt in the daylight, let alone in the dark. When you can't see any obvious signs of torchlight, there's really a scary part because no human could do it without suffering injury. I mean, it makes fishermen leave their, their, their fishing spot. I mean, it, you know, but why well, call it evil? That was my weird one thing about this. You know, just because, you know, it's there doesn't mean it's evil. But like I said, you know, are they going to be looking for legality to shoot Bigfoot? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. This one is weird. I don't know if you've seen this, Jamie. Suspected ghost hunter found dead in an abandoned Italian church. We've had, over the eight years, nine years of doing this show, several of these, um, you know, paranormal investigators found dead. One is you never go alone. You know, I don't know. 
Authorities in Italy are investigating a bizarre mystery involving a suspected ghost hunter who was found dead inside an abandoned church. The very strange case reportedly began over the weekend when an unnamed woman remains were discovered in the dis disused building located in the country of As uh, Asoda Valley. So I said that right. Police subsequently determined that the woman had come to the area from France and prior to her departure had told her family that the purpose of the trip was to find a haunted house. Authorities uh, theorize that her fa uh, faithful journey may have been inspired by a ghost hunting challenge that had become popular on TikTok, of course, in her home country. However, certain aspects of the case have left investigators scratching their heads and raising an alternative possibility that the woman may have willingly offered herself up for some kind of misguided self-sacrifice. Specifically, they noted that she was found with both knife and gunshot wounds, though there were no signs of a struggle at the scene and some of her blood had been removed from the scene. A witness who spotted the woman in the area said that she was with a yet-to-be-identified yet man and that the duo resembled vampires due to their clothing and appearance. The observers also eerily likened the victim to a walking corpse, describing her as a pale and emanci uh, uh, emaciated. Uh, as one might imagine, authorities are hoping to locate the mysterious man who was seen with the woman, and he would presumably have some insight into her unfortunate demise, dem demise excuse me, and may even be responsible for her death. Additionally, police are trying to track down a, uh, 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 a burgundy van that security cameras filmed at the scene of the crime earlier that month. Chilling, invest Chilling investigators have also raised the possibility that the woman's death could be connected to a pair of recent missing person cases they're also trying to solve. They got a lot going on. But it's weird. I, I, I hate that they, you know, they make it sound like some ghost hunter went in there. Uh, this sounds like somebody had, you know, really gotten into the deep, dark stuff. You know, if you get into the... I be, and I'm not trying to judge anybody, but if you get into that the dark world of like vampires and believe in your vampires, I think it, you you really in dangerous territory. I think stuff with blood is really dangerous. I mean, medically, but there's also something spiritually about it. I think, and I've heard this. I mean, I've had guests on that have said it um, that you really invite some dark things in, and and obviously dark people. I mean, who knows with this guy she was with, and if he killed her. But yeah, that was a weird one. And, and you know, and like they said, stuff was removed. I mean, obviously, it sounds it smells like foul play. I, I don't know if this woman really killed herself. Gunshot wound, stabbing well, wounds. Blood was removed. Did they mean clean? Blood was up removed, or like removed? Yeah, right, or removed. Yeah. They said removed, and this is like vampire kind like, of stuff. Were veins dry, or yeah. was it wiped up? Do I mean, I've known people. I mean, I've seen people get sucked into that world, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's not good. Mm -mm. I mean, I come from the 90s goth days, man. And Anne Rice and the Vampire Diaries, or Diaries, Vampire Chronicles. Sorry, Anne. Uh, she'd kill me for saying that, right? Vampire Diaries yeah. is good, too, right? Okay. Oh, All right, I let's move on. White face with the rice powder and blood yeah. red lipstick. It's Satan. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying, you know, if you if you search for dark things and put you you surround yourself with those, that kind of energy, you might get bad things. Attract it's bad people. What you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, you might attract really bad people. You know, it's sad uh, for her family mainly. You know, they're probably never going to have answers. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, that was it. So this next one's kind of funny. It's not paranormal. <laughs> I thought this guy's. Gumption here is pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this one. Uh, let's see. Let me get the right one. Yes. German art museum fires worker for hanging his own painting in gallery. <laughs> I get the coast to coast Tim Bindle shorter article here. Inspiring artists who work for a museum in Germany may soon be on the uh, star, uh, starving variety after he was fired. So uh, placing one of his own paintings in a gallery of contemporary works. The weird incident, which came to light this week by way of German newspaper, reportedly occurred in late February at the Pinnacafafik der Modrin city of Munich. I don't know what I probably butchered that. Taking advantage of his role as a maintenance worker at the museum, the unnamed man slipped past inspecting security guards with his painting in tow and proceeded to hang it along various modern works of art. Measuring approximately two by four feet, the unauthorized early morning uh, addition to the gallery was quickly noticed by museum staff, though they decided to wait until the site closed before they removed it from the wall. Police theorized that the brazen installation was done by the worker in the hope of achieving an artistic breakthrough. Should it have been the case, a spokesperson for the museum offered a rather cruel assessment of the plan as they noted that we did not receive any positive feedback. <laughs> Aww. Poor guy. And as an idea. It, you know, he doesn't have a job. He tried. 
He tried. I think those that are in there, all those people are dead, too, you know. But I don't know. Don't do that. And you say starving artists, right? All right, let's move on. Oh, this next one. NASA. <laughs> NASA, NASA. Well, they can't find aliens, or they say they don't see them, and all none of that. But they've been invited to help search for Loch Ness. Yeah, you heard that right. Uh, is this the key to finally finding Nessie, according to the Daily Mail? NASA has been asked to help in the search for the elusive Loch Ness Monster. I'm going to do the unexplained mystery articles a little bit shorter. <laughs> Loch Ness, oh, wait, what does it do? Last year we saw what was uh, billed as the largest Loch Ness Monster hunt in 50 years, an endeavor involving hundreds of volunteers as well as the use of dozens of webcams, camera-equipped drones, and even special hy hydrophones that managed to pick up unexplained sounds in the murky depths. While the search ultimately failed to find anything conclusive, the event itself was so successful that the Loch Ness Monster Center is going to attempt an even bigger search between May 30th and June 2nd of this year, and this time is calling a range of experts to come along and help. There's even hope that NASA will lend some of its expertise to the problem of finding Nessie. We are hoping that the experts from NASA might have some advanced imaging technology to scan the lock, said Loch Ness Center Marketing Manager Amy Todd. We would have to sit down and talk to them about how to get it there. The timing of the new search will coincide with the 90th anniversary of the first ever major search for a lock, which was conducted by Sir Edward Mountain and his team back in 1934. Last year, we captured the world's attention with one of the biggest ever searches for Nessie, with participants joining from America, Canada, France, Italy, Japan, and more. Uh, with unexplained noises heard alongside possible sightings they, the, this year, we are determined to find out more about the elusive Loch Ness Monster. Will NASA help? I don't know. You know they're just sitting there laughing about this yeah. stuff. Yeah, sure, we'll help you find Loch Ness. Let's not like, talk about gonna, aliens. Let's just tell them now we're looking for Loch Ness. Have them, you know, grant us, give us money for that. And then why don't they use AI? Um, no, for real though, because AI. I mean, it has been the Loch is in in America. It's not my <laughs> taxpayers' right? dollars searching for. Of course, I'd be happy if they found Loch Ness. That'd be awesome. They found some mining sites using AI, supposedly. So why don't they use AI to figure out where Loch Ness might AI be? AI will come back with the answer is 42 and there's no Loch Ness. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know. I, I've always been up in the air about Loch Ness. There's been so many, so long history of people citing it. You know, is it real? I don't know. I've never I been into the cryptid not. monster thing. You know, they had that such a big search. You'd think by now... I'm not saying, you know, of course, it's the same thing with Bigfoot. I mean, they haven't found Bigfoot, and I think they've done a lot of big searches, but I still believe it exists. Um, the Loch Ness, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, who knows what's under there, you know? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. they got to do, a, a, you know, more technology, more people, more searches. What happens when they find it? I don't know. Well, next up, last of the articles tonight. As you see, I didn't have a lot for the World Wide Web Weird this week. Uh, Elon Musk speaks out about colonizing Mars and extraterrestrial life. I found this interesting because it follows here. A uh, SpaceX event at the firm's Starbase facility in Texas on April 6th, Musk outlined his vision for the coming decades and touched on a number of topics ranging from alien life to the future of humanity. On the subject of Mars, Musk talked a bit about using a new technology he calls ship to ship propellant transfer that can be used to refuel starships the firm's next generation of space vehicle after it has reached orbit so it will have enough fuel for long distance missions each individual trip to mars he claims will require starships to be refu uh, refueled six times ultimately musk wants to stop being a lame one planet civilization <laughs> and colonize mars by building a colony there within as little as 20 years i, I have my doubts there's one snag however uh, as those who choose to go and live there will not have the option to return to Earth at all, at least to begin with. You'll actually want to use the ship, take part of the ship, and use it for raw materials on Mars, uh, he said, because the ship materials will be so valuable, most of the ship you won't want to bring back. But the next part's what's really interesting. Uh, interesting. He's talking about, what do you say here? I'm going to get to this part. Eventually, we'll want to bring ships back, and I think we'll want to give people the option of coming back because they're more likely to want to go there if some op they have some option of coming back. But I think most people that go to Mars will never come back to Earth. Musk also envisions launching multiple starships each day for several years to transport over one million people and enormous amounts of cargo to Mars to fund the sustainable city there. It will look like Battlestar Galactica, great show, uh, but in a good way. 
about the AI? I don't know. He says in a good way, but he's making the robots that are pretty much similar to the, the beginning of Battlestar Galactica, Gattaca either, you know. Uh, on the subject of extraterrestrial life, however, Musk is less enthusiastic as usual. I have not seen any evidence that there are aliens on Earth, he said. The question of uh, where are the aliens is a very profound one. I'm aware of no evidence of aliens whatsoever. I think we are probably alone. I think you're lying. <laughs> Why? Because he has multiple military contracts. <clears throat> he could not talk about it. There's no way. He could not talk about it. He's making buco bucks off the military. Buco bucks. And there's no way he's going to spill that secret. I think he does know. I, that's my, if I had a bet on it, I think he does know, and it's a straight-out lie. Because, you know, military contracts. I mean, I, I think Bigelow, as he got older, he, that's when he started talking about it. I don't think he cared about the contracts anymore. But I think for Musk, he's right in the thick of it, and he's not going to talk about it. But I don't know. Would you go to Mars if you can't come back? And you think a million people are going to go? What are you, Jamie? You think a million people are going to go? <clears throat> you never know anymore. Well, they're sure making things crappy enough here to make people want to go to that crap hole. <laughs> and I say crap hole because I have my doubts. I don't think we're going to be, you know, growing, using our poop to grow potatoes there, <laughs> Matt Damon. You know, I, I don't know how well things are going to go there. I have my doubts. I think they've already been setting up the labs, the DNA labs and everything up there. And uh, who is it? Bezos well, is making that big, huge monument that that they want the humanoids to be able to fly down to visit um, years later. Every 100 years, this new time chamber is supposed to or maybe open up. The, 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 you know, they're, they're shipping. He's taking the next 20 years because he knows something's coming. There's the doomsday. Fear, people, fear! China know. with the slingshot to the moon, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think a million people are going to go to Mars in 20 years. That's just my opinion, but I might be wrong. Uh, in 20 years from now, broke. they can tell me I told you so. Once <laughs> that jumps, the rest might follow. <laughs> well, we got to go to commercial break. Uh, when we come back, our guest tonight is Sir Blake Sinclair, author of the Golden Book series. We've got a lot of different stuff we can get into, especially aliens. You know we're going to get into that. And then later in the show, uh, we have him for an hour. We'll uh, do some open lines. It might end the show early tonight because, you know, it all depends on how you're going, calling in. And if my phone line's working right, I'm having issues with that. But when we back, our guest tonight is Sir Blake Sinclair after a short commercial break. Voices from Beyond the Gold Case Files. So we hope you join us live on Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you there. Bye bye. <laughs> Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hobson Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcast. of the second kind, physical evidence of a UFO, close encounters of the third kind, contact. From Steven Spielberg, the director of Jaws, comes one of the most ambitious and unusual films ever made. 
and what you will see has never been seen before. It's a cosmic mystery crossing what many scientists believe will be the next threshold of human experience. It is called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It begins in an Indiana town and leads to one inescapable conclusion. We are not alone. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Certificate A. Now showing at the Odeon Leicester Square. The international chart topping, haunted horror of Haverford West has been described as terrifyingly real, a must read, shocking and chilling brilliance, genuinely worrying, utterly frightening. Don't read before bed. Described as one of the spookiest writers out there, best-selling author G.L. Davies presents Haunted Horror of Haverford West, the true paranormal account that is shocking the world. Dare you enter? Dare you read? Haunted Horror of Haverford West is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, and wherever books are sold. Pray you never have to live there. This is the sound of a space clock aboard a U.S. satellite 180 miles above the Earth. No one winds up this timepiece. It's powered by a tiny battery, a battery that delivers power for years without replacement. Now the same type of battery, the Duracell battery, can bring new reliability and long life to your battery-operated equipment. Radios, cameras, toys, all run far longer. Duracell batteries, the long-distance power cells, outlast any ordinary battery. The same type of battery that keeps space clocks running for years can bring long life to anything powered by batteries. Dura, as in durable. Cell, as in power cell. The Duracell battery, made by Mallory. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Tonight on Paranormal Soup, our guest is Sir Blake Sinclair. Sir Blake Sinclair is a writer and author of Dare to Imagine and Beyond Imagination. He also has a new book, A New Beginning, An Antidote to Civilization. He's a native of San Francisco, a mystic, philosopher, Grand Knight Commander of the Royal Esquitarian Order of Mar Michael Archangel, and is the Goodwill Ambassador of the Royal House of Ghassan. He's also a certified health coach, is a certified in the uh, Cloud Unit PMF technology, is a humanitarian, has an extensive background in the medical field as a licensed occupational therapist with over 30 years of experience in the rehabilitation industry. His skills are diverse, and he integrates Eastern acupuncture, meditation, energy, medicine, Tai Chi principles, etc., and Western techn uh, techniques. He's had training in hypnosis, Reiki, as well as psych psychic uh, or psychic K. His uh, techniques has been described as uh, electric, efficient, and intense, and highly effective. He was given the gift of vision at a very early age. At a young age, he found himself tuning in to the cosmic energy, but it was decades later he began to understand it. When he was a teenager, he had a vision of how he, cars would one day have some uh, type of sensor that would affect car safety. Forty years later, cars began having various sensors that would increase car safety. During his young adult years, he began to see visions of his soul as it began to descend to Earth for his current incarnation. 
He saw the purpose of his incarnation at this time, but not make the connection until decades later he began to go through his spiritual awakening. Later in his life, he had a vision of the future, where he saw technology being fueled by electromagnetic energy. I hope that's true. He saw how public transportation would be a solar above us, like a science fiction movie. He also has spontaneous visions when he heals. Many times he can see the future outcomes and progress of his clients before he starts working with them. This guest has a lot we can talk about tonight. We only sadly have him for an hour, but we'll definitely try to get him back on again. And then later in the show, like I said, we'll do some open lines and might do the sh end of the show early. But we got a lot to get to, so let's go ahead and get rolling on into it. All right. Let's get him in here. How you doing tonight? Do, do you want to call you just Blake? Go by Blake? Sure. <laughs> Sir Blake, <laughs> we got the. Yeah. Let's, call you Blake. Sure, mm -hmm. let's make it casual. <laughs> well, it's nice to finally you know have you on the show. Thank you. It's an honor to have you on. Um, I gave you know the the bio, but we we were talking before the show what you want to get into. You have so many things, so so much we could talk about tonight. Chinese astro astrology is super fascinating to me too. Um, and I mean, you have your three books you've authored. You've had all these experiences. I have to admit, though, when I heard about a little bit of an interview I heard with you and Jimmy Church, mm -hmm. uh, you talked about your father. Because I listened to Jimmy mm -hmm. Church. Jimmy Church is awesome. Oh. Uh, you talked about your father on there and his Roswell connection. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> we might have to talk about that a little bit. So sure. I, I, have to add, I have to ask about that because that seems very interesting. Well, it's an honor to be here. And hello, Jamie and Jason. Uh, love to share with you my experience, my father's experience. And my father was in the military in the 1940s. He was based in White Sand, New Mexico, which is close to Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah. And uh, he was a top secret projects. He was in the top secret photography. And he would uh, analyze like the V2 rockets that were retrieved from Nazi. And they would analyze it. They would videotape it or, or film it. And they would take pictures and analyze yeah. kind of to help with the reverse engineering kind of the projects. Yeah. And one day he was developing a picture and his buddy said, Hey, you, you got that picture for the Roswell crash. And his buddy was telling like everybody, like and this guy has the pictures that he's developing. And right after that, it was, he was silenced and nobody ever talked about that anymore. And I didn't know about this, about my father. I know that he was a photographer. Yeah, I went to his room and he would have a picture of a V2 rocket in his room. And my brother went to the Smithsonian Institute and he also saw pictures of that. So chances are one of those pictures or many of them might have been taken by my father. Wow. Uh, anyway, so so he developed the picture for the Roswell crash and he, he, he looked at it and it changed his life, but he, he wouldn't talk about it. So one day as an adult, I was watching a program about the Roswell incident. Yeah, and he's behind me smoking his cigarette, and he kind of chuckled and said, "Hey, I, I was there." I said, "What do you mean you were there?" He says, "I developed the picture for that crash," and he was very serious, yeah. and but he he wouldn't give me any detail. Uh. And I was wondering why, but I, I um, recently befriended a an individual who also was involved in top secret things, and she said that they had to sign some kind of an agreement that they won't talk about it, and if they did. They would basically go to jail or worse than that i think people would get threatened and i think that's what happened to his yeah. buddy in the military he was threatened so you know i was kind of researching about my dad a little bit and actually i haven't talked about the subject about the the ufology uh publicly until recently yeah i, I just thought it was a kind of family secret but somehow <laughs> i got thrust into the world of paranormal because normally i talk <laughs> about health wellness spirituality but something that we thought was I thought was a family secret. But sooner or later, people said, you know, it's time to share that information. And the more I talked about it, the more people were interested. And then I started yeah. to research about my father, more information about him. And uh, it was interesting that I found out last year that he actually spoke German. And I had no idea. And the importance of that is that because there was a famous uh, rocket scientist that worked at White Sand, New Mexico. It's a Wenher von uh, von, von Braun. Von Braun. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah exactly. That's the most famous. Yeah, yes, he's the top the uh, Nazi rocket scientist. 
Yeah, I yeah, mean, I literally, the, the the calculations that Elon's using to get to Mars are based off the, uh, of Von Braun's math. Yeah, he was like the founder of rocket scientists, and uh, he was involved in NASA and Apollo projects and all that. Very important in NASA. So he was there a lot at White Sand, New Mexico. So my father would see him quite frequently with his uh, entourage. And wow. you know, since my father spoke German and not too many people there would speak German, I'm wondering, did he actually talk to him or work with him? Right. So that was another connection I just got recently. So, and then since he was there during the same time, I'm sure that he went to visit that crash because he's a rocket scientist and they probably began their, what we call the reverse engineering based on the uh, crash wreckage. Oh yeah. So if they really were to go to anybody, Von Braun would be definitely on the top of the list. Right, right. And I have another piece of information that I discovered recently too, is that uh, sometime, I think it was uh, either after that uh, incident, my father was going back on a pass and he was catching a plane to go back. And on the, the last minute, he got bumped off by another officer. Shortly after the plane took off, it crashed into a mountain. Everybody oh, wow. died instantly. So I'm wondering if you know he and other people have witnessed whatever they were not supposed to witness. And this is one way to suppress that information by kind of setting it up so the plane crashed and people were still on the seat. So after the snow melted from the mountain, they, they retrieved all the, the wreckage and the people. So that was something I found out recently. What I, I find interesting about your this with your father is that people are like, well, wouldn't people talk by now? Would, you know, your father didn't. I mean, he talked to you, but he never went public. And there's was, there was a ton of people that went to their, proving that, you know, a ton of people have gone to their deathbed that were part of that Roswell incident and never told That's anyone, right. not even family members. Right. I was just lucky I was watching a program and I, maybe he had a drink or two and he felt kind of relaxed and said, hey, it's yeah. time to say something. <laughs> Imagine but, holding uh, that. I mean, that kind of right, knowledge, right, right. you know, like you're that patriotic that you keep that to yourself, that you you believe it's for the best interest. You know, they told you, you believe your government, you believe your military, that it's the best interest of this country to keep the secret and keep your mouth shut. And you did. I That's also right. think that the the threats or whatever they're using to have you not talk could be that terrifying too yeah, as well because right. you see some of these men on their deathbeds when they do finally get to tell their story it's almost like this huge weight is lifted off like they finally am right. able to get all this out what do they have to lose right that's right i mean uh, the there's still other instances that have happened since Roswell and there's other witnesses in the military and people that could come out and talk. And we've had some of that, you know, the disclosure move and all that. And this is why people are interested in hearing your, this experience from you because more people are waking up to this. You know, I've been in it. I've known about it since I was a little kid. I've been a believer, you know, let's say, but you know, more people are becoming more open or familiar with it, more open to talk about it. You know, I'd be interested to see what your dad, if your dad was alive today with a lot of the stuff that's happened the last few years, what he would have thought, or if he would have been more open. Right, right. And I think it was uh, difficult for him because, you know, if you see what you saw back then, so that's why he would uh, listen to Arc Bell. So I guess he oh. was kind of I curiously through that show. Yeah. You know? He wouldn't talk about it. So that's the only connection with that show and hearing other people. But he talk listened about to Art Bell. But he listened to yes. Art Bell. So he had an interest. Right. See, Art would always Art would always say, I know you're out there listening to the people that were involved. You know, he Art always knew there were some of the, the that these people that witnessed Roswell that were in the military, kept their mouth shut, were listening to his show. You know? And your dad was one of them. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's too bad. Too bad he didn't call in. But anonymous with Art, you know. <laughs> Maybe he did. He didn't he missed the show. You gotta go listen to the archives. <laughs> But that's why Art Bell was awesome. That's why Art Bell was awesome, you know. Well, I, you know, I think it's important that you share this and let people know, uh, you know, because it, I think there's others. I think there's other people out there that had a, a family member who told them something, and maybe they've kept that to themselves, you know. There's other people who might come out and talk eventually. But you, your work, you know, you've, you, you know, as um, you have the, the three books that you've written, you, like you say, you haven't, didn't know you were going to get sucked into the kind of the paranormal world, but you're in the spiritual world. And as I right. said before, our, our last several guests have been ET contactees, and we've really dived into the, the spiritual aspect of these, these experiences with people. And, and you have had some spiritual aspects of this, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think uh, having experiences with the ascended beings. Yeah. And I myself have had contact experience when I was a child, 
and uh, had a missing time when I was in the farm when I was a young kid for about one hour. I didn't think anything about it. I just remember going back to the farm and somehow that time was missing. And then as an adult, I studied uh, like past life regression hypnosis. And during that process, I started to see uh, what happened to me during that time period, that, that missing time. And interesting enough, the uh, professor of that class was clairvoyant to a psychic. And I sat way, way in the back. And she, she looked at me after we were done the, with a practice. And she said, would you like to share your experience? She already knew before she had asked me. She saw it. And I told her, I, I saw this, uh, these two entities, these two beings on the, both sides of me, either side of me. And they're very tall, very slender, probably anywhere from 7 to 10 feet tall, very big eyes. And um, they look kind of like a praying mantis. And I know in another show, they asked me, were they menacing or did they have any traumatic experience? But I, I didn't. And they said that um, other people have had experience, negative experience with these particular entities or these beings, but other people didn't. So, yeah. uh, so that was fascinating. I mean, the guests, the last two guests I've had on, they are, their experiences have been positive with these interdimensional beings. And that's what they are. Like, mm -hmm. they're interdimensional. Yes. I mean, right. isn't it just, I mean, a case of synaptics, you know, where, you know, angel, alien, interdimensional angel you know like i was saying that what we've been experiencing for thousands of years people who have had near-death experiences uh people who remember their past lives or had those experiences well, for you you remember the life in between that they have some that we, we think of the afterlife as all of our loved ones over there and all that but if the universe is vast and the afterlife touches all that we're going to have entities that are from other planets in that afterlife Right. I mean, we can't be the right. only ones there and, and they have less some part of our progress here. With regards to like past life, I did do a past life regression one time just for fun as an adult. And uh, it was done by a very good hypnotherapist, you know, with hypnosis and that realm of subconsciousness, you have to pick someone really good. It's easy for someone to plant seeds of information yeah. to, mis to misguide you. Very dangerous. That's why I've always felt about it. Yeah, but uh, someone who's really good and licensed or certified, they're they're good at guiding you objectively. And I did have a very good experience uh, going back in time. And when I went through this process, when I opened my eyes in that state of uh, hypnosis, I saw myself in Egypt. I was surrounded by uh, a desert. I lived in this kind of a place that was very, very simple. And uh, I was a, a prince at that time. And I don't think for a long time because I wasn't happy yeah. with that lifetime. So I decided to give it up to become a healer. So I left and went to the sleeping temple to become a healer. And I was a healer to the day that I died. And it was an interesting story about that is that when I died, uh, I saw my soul leave my body. And instead of like, seeing like some angelic being, I saw these extraterrestrial beings assisting me to the next dimension. Uh, they didn't have big eyes, but they had real small eyes. But definitely, they were not human. Right. So I kind of talked to my friend recently, who was a renowned psychic, and she was able to, to tune into these experiences and verify. And she also further said that it wasn't just after life that they were with me; they were also with me during my when I was alive in Egypt. So they've been working with me many lifetimes, so past lifetime and this lifetime as well. And they were kind of a uh, similar group of uh, extraterrestrial beings that work with me. And she said that event that happened to me as a child is going to happen again. I will have another contact experience in the future. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's like I said, it's been kind of the ongoing theme of this show for the last month of, the, of people with these experiences uh, of alien contact. You know, it's not like the, uh, the abduction or the darkness things that I've had other, I have people that legitimately are having negative abductions you know on this show uh but these are more like a spiritual positive thing and that they're involved in some sense of of our reincarnation process our afterlife they're involved in it. Our, our our soul lessons that this is such a bigger picture than what we can think of when it comes to our afterlife i think that's the theme we've been getting at you know we're seeing yeah, yeah. that for people like you and the other two guests we've had a lot you know last several shows is that this that you know the the, the picture is so much bigger and 
And you, you really, I mean, for me, I've had my weird experiences uh, and some alien secrets. I told you about the UFO before the show I saw, you know. Um, you, have you had uh, sightings, too, of ships or anything like that? Because a lot of those contactees usually have some kind of sighting. Yeah, I have a, actually a video footage in uh, Sedona, about 20 seconds of a UFO flying. And you, you can see them, they're very erratic in their flight pattern. Not like a one that was a kind of reverse engineered by our government or somebody else's government. Um, these are really erratic and uh, amazing to watch. So I think twice I've seen a UFO at Sedona. And Sedona is a popular place for UFOs yeah. because there's a lot of vortexes there. I mean, it's so popular, so common that you can actually book a tour for a UFO tour and yeah. see these things. It's pretty amazing. And I also saw one at um, one or two at Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta. Oh, yeah, that's a, you're talking about vortexes. Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call it the root chakra. Some people call it the heart chakra. And one master said that a long time ago, the uh, there was a Tibetan group of monks. And they took some artifacts, they brought it to the mountains to transfer mm -hmm. some of that energy mm -hmm. from Mount Kailash to Mount Shasta. So that it became kind of like the uh, crown chakra of the planet. So depending who you talk to, but it's interesting. But I did visit a Tibetan stupa there at the uh, Mount Shasta. And uh, yeah, I have seen some there. And many people claim that underneath the lenticular clouds are UFO. And I, I believe that sometimes they are there and sometimes they're not. One time I was uh, driving, and I, I don't know why, but sometimes I get these kind of a nudge or feeling that something's there. So yeah. I, I don't see anything. But I'll take my camera and just take a couple of shots. Later on, I come back and look at it, and I say, oh, my God, I caught this thing. I couldn't believe it. But it's like a little energy kind of connecting to me. And one time I have a picture of this cloud, but then you can see kind of like a, a rim around the cloud. And clouds yeah. don't have that kind of formation. It's kind of like a, like a, a fine saucer kind of rim. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And then one time I videotaped something in the night. Again, I was like kind of called to the window to look out. And I saw this thing with the light and I started videotaping it. And then so then when I brought a zoom level in my camera, I could see what's changing, like the red color, green color. And then it finally eventually disappeared. But uh, Mount Shasta is known as a place of paranormal places. Many yeah. UFO sightings there, UFOs, uh, Bigfoot, ascended beings. In fact, I uh, got initiated with the the path of the uh, mystical journey with the ascended masters at Mount Shasta. So it's a beautiful, sacred, mystical mountain where many things happen there, and especially UFO sightings. And in fact, one, one of my friends had sent me a video, and she was there and for some reason. She also has a lot of connections with UFOs, and she knows when they come, and she just sets up a camera, and then they show up. So, you know, in the beginning of your show, I think you, you had a picture or a video of this uh kind of cigar shaped ufo or maybe shadow and anyways oh, that's from the eclipse video. yeah yeah it was eclipse okay so yeah. but then in my friend's video you can see her holding a camera she's standing there something flies by real fast and it, it looks almost like the same shape but it goes so fast yeah. in a cigar shape zip by within like a second and you have to slow it down in order to capture it but it was much faster than that shadow it was like really fast it was definitely not a, from this planet. I mean, it flew like supersonic speed. And I know yeah. like uh, in the old book, there was a book written by uh, Phylos, the Tibetan. He's an ascended being talking about these cigar shaped spaceships. And then seeing it on, on this video with my friend recently, like a, one or two weeks ago was pretty impressive. And she always has these kind of experiences. And I've always been interested cool. in cigar, cigar or cylindrical shape UFOs because of like what, what I told you I saw. It had no yeah. lights and it was like very blocky under it, but it was like, you know, it could have been like cigar or cylindrical. It went right over our heads, 500, 600 feet up silently. But when you say it's like, n never heard it make a noise, but we all, just, yeah, yeah. we all, right. we all didn't say a word to each other. We all just looked up. We felt it, it was like this buzzing in my head, you know? It, it, so it's like, I, I get that. You feel like you, it, that, that, that one I've had, like I felt it before I saw it. Yeah, in fact, uh, one of my friends uh, saw one when she was six years old. Uh, I think they're either Fremont or Newark, and she looked up with her mom and saw this thing was um, almost a mile long. It was like a mothership, just hovering above them. It's just like you said, it was silent, very quiet, and all of a sudden it just zips away. Yeah, this thing was huge. It was a mile long. But it, it, I remember that. Yeah, the the. the 
this thing was huge that I saw. And my, my first thought as I was seen is like, that's no way that's ours. Yeah. You know, that's right. there's no way that's ours. You know, that, you know, cause I, you know, I, I've been very well versed in the UFO and all that stuff at that age already. I've been totally interested in it. And like I said, I told you before the show is that the people didn't remember it the next day. So one kind right. of remembered it and the other didn't, you know, it's like, you know, what's going on there? Why do I remember it? or why I see it? And they say some people don't even see them while others do. You know, there, there's some interdimensional aspect to some of these things that we're seeing. That's what, I, you know, I my takeaway, big takeaway from it is. Yeah, sometimes they're existing at a different vibrational level and the, you know, the friends may not be able to see that particular level. Just like I had a friend in Europe, she sent me a picture and she told me to look at it. And she asked me to look at it and say, see, what do you see? I said, I don't see anything. I said, okay, try again. I'll relax your eyes. And so I really focus on relaxing my eyes. And all of a sudden, I could see all these entities around her. She had like an alien on one side and all these other entities. And, and, and they would visit her on a regular basis. And she's one of these uh, really advanced souls. And in fact, she actually has a picture of one of the uh, abduction experiences. And really? it looks like a, yeah, it was a hybrid. It had big eyes and it here, and they would take her up regularly. And um, whatever they did, that uh, conversation, whatever they do, and then they bring her back. But she had that picture taken from her iPhone. She had it validated at the university and it was validated. And she went on TV to talk about it. But unfortunately, wow. where she's from, the people weren't so friendly about it. They actually uh, kind of attacked her and uh, they, yeah, they chastised her and uh, she had to go under. It was Sounds kind of familiar. Situation. She got a picture with her phone, uh, like of uh, being like yeah. during the abduction experience. I, I have it, but I, I, I promise that I can't share it. It's right. Because it's, yeah, uh, I get it. yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's really, it sounds familiar. Like I've heard of this. Uh, but you know, that's, you know, I, I mean, my one friend, Terry Lovelace, who is an abductee, uh, he's, he had his phone. He didn't get a picture, uh, but he had his phone on him and it like recorded his GPS location being like above wow, his house. Really? That yeah, is so he cool. Slept with it. Yeah. So like GPS showed him going up. He even called like the phone company, you know? Wow. But, you know, people are having these experiences and more people like you, you didn't expect to be talking about this, but more people are coming out about these experiences. It's being more accepted. There is kind of a, like we've talked about last couple of shows, an awakening to this idea, you know, that we're all an experience. I'm awakening to my own experiences I wrote off for years. I, I just thought it was just dreams, you know, but I'm starting mm -hmm. to wonder if they were or not because of the weird stuff that's happened. And then, then hearing people like you and others talk about their experiences. Yeah, I had a, I have a friend that recently talked about this uh, experience he has, and she said one day she, she had these uh, visions, and it was very clear about her being in a UFO, and she could tell exactly all the details. Like, I have memories of the, the enter ETs, but she didn't have that memory, but she had the memory of the details of the spaceship. And she said it was a small spaceship, probably the size of uh, two rooms, maybe about eight to ten feet high, it was a flying saucer and it was in the center of it were like two seats, very high seats. And the seats came up to her shoulder. And then there was like a council in, in front of her. But the weird thing is that the council was kind of uh, further away from the seat. It seemed like they would do something on the council and then sit back and enjoy the ride. And so on the council, it was like um, some kind of lever and it was like a block lever. And at the end of the lever, there was kind of like a lip for their fingers. And then there was some, uh, buttons that were kind of recessed and some knobs and um and the interior was very very simple and it had like a metal or alloy that we don't have on this planet but she said the thing is that when she she was inside of that she felt a weird feeling it was kind of a dark feeling not like a the, the demonic dark but yeah darker than normal because she's also a very spiritual person she connects with the ascended beings and that's a light that feels different and uh, she's you know, experienced with the demonic beings that's very dark but this is something in between but it wasn't scary but it, it was a weird feeling she said but yeah that was uh, her memory of it and it yeah, was we kind were, of interesting we were talking about i mean la like i said with these uh, contactees of having these experiences of being taken up especially as children and the these ets showing them how to use their mind to control the ship and letting them take oh, the right. ship for a ride and that, and that the ships are living for some of the, the, the ships are alive. Yeah, she, she talked about that. I said, how do they control it then? She says, well, it's through telepathy. 
They do something yeah. on the ship, and then they use the mind to control it. Yeah, that is exactly what the last two contactees I had on set. Mm -hmm. You know, you know there, there are technologies obviously way beyond us, especially mm -hmm. if it's being controlled. Or they're controlling their ships with telepathy. I mean, literally, you have to use telepathy, according to these contactees, to you have to envision the place you want to go and have been there or know it, and it'll take you there. And that's what they were training them as children to do. You know. Well, that's if you think about it, it's kind of like a near-death experience when people die. And they mm -hmm. get into that realm, and if they want to go somewhere, all they do is think about it, yep. think, and then all of a sudden they're there. So this is kind of like a more, I guess, like a machine way of doing it too. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I mean, like again, to bring up Terry Lovelace, I, I always do, but he's my friend. Is he wrote uh, a book about uh, a lot of the Af uh, near death experiences? He would get people to write. They'd always write him about his e their ET experiences, but he started getting people writing like, you know, you're your abductions and all these experiences remind me of my dear near death experience that there is a connection between mm -hmm. these near death experiences and ETs and abductions and the spiritual sense of it. That's right. Now, you know, doing all, you know, being in all this, you are also into a lot of other things. You're, you know, you're a therapist, you're an author, Chinese astrology. This is what the year of the wooden dragon is that right, the, right. we're in the year of the wooden dragon? I don't know what that means. I don't know nothing about astrology, or let alone Chinese astrology. Uh, but it, does anything in that to, uh, indicate us having you know more of these experiences or this awakening movement? Well, let's, your dragon is interesting. And uh, the wooden dragon, this is like a Chinese medicine has with the five element theory. And so the dragon is one of the most auspicious creatures and beings. And there's a year of manifestation. Uh, dragons are, represents abundance, success, good luck, prosperity. And it's a good time to start a new business, new beginnings. And the wood is like a tree. A tree represents growth. And uh, you know, you burn a tree, you know, it's like transformation. So I think that this year is a year of transformation. And the energy coming to the planet is from the universe side, supporting us in that effort. So if we embrace it, I think we can help the planet to kind of shift to higher consciousness. So we can use it for our business, so we can use it to help humanity to evolve further. So the dragon is very interesting because this we're talking about UFO and all that. Mm -hmm. So dragon goes back to the yellow emperor, the days of the yellow emperor, which goes back to almost, almost a couple of, what, 3,000 years ago. The, the founding and, of Chinese medicine. Yeah, 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 you know that. And uh, I think the Yellow Emperor was on the History Channel one time. Some people speculate that he actually is an extraterrestrial being that came to Earth to help humanity. Anyways, uh, people say he's a myth. But interesting enough, um, this guy existed on the planet. He helped, like you said, Chinese medicine, Qi Gong, Feng Shui, and those all these uh, kind of foundations of cultural things for China. He unified China, and he practiced spiritual alchemy. It was very advanced individual. And towards the end of his life, he, he met this dragon being. And the dragon being gave him a dragon pearl. So if you look at Chinese art, you, you'll see the dragon with a claw and this pearl. The dragon represents the emperor. Because many times, if you look at the history of China, there's like um, an appearance of a dragon usually with the emperor. And usually during a good reigning period, it's an auspicious sign. So with this particular yellow emperor, he got this dragon pearl, he had seven of them. And through certain words or activation, they could help your third eye, they could help you with health, they can help you become an emperor. So he gave that to his grandson. Then they kept it for thousands of years and it turned out to give it to this one guy, the, the grand master who lives in LA. And it so happens that I met him. I was presenting- he's a descendant a of the yellow emperor? Yes, he is a direct wow. descendant. So I was presenting at Taoist convention. It was attended by all these big wigs in the history and the Chinese medicine, Qigong yeah. master. And uh, while I was presenting, there was a guy wearing a yellow robe. He was very royal, very regal and divine. I had no idea who he was. At the end of all the presentation, uh, we were invited to like a, this VIP banquet. And I sat down and he was at my table. Yeah, although he didn't speak much English, uh, yeah. there was an, another guy next to me. He was a doctor of acupuncture, and uh, he was able to translate. So through that, because I, I felt the strong energy from him. Yeah. I felt like he was some kind of king or something royal. 
And he was kind of surprised. He said, how, how did you tune into my energy? Did you attend my workshop? I said, no. He said, did you know I have a Dragon Pro? I said, no. And so he told me about that story. And uh, we had a good talk there. And then he invited me to his hotel in Jack London Square. And uh, he showed me this Dragon Pro. He did some ritual first. And then he yeah. got this Pro. It's not too big, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. But then it was uh, glowing, glowing energy. And he says that's very powerful. And he says sometimes he'll carry it with him when he does a presentation or lectures to like maybe 5,000 people or 10,000 people. And people get very emotional because this has been handed energy. down to him for generations yes, yes. from the yellow yes, emperor. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you go online, you can find him. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's Grandmaster uh, Zhang Yuan Ming. He, he's in my book, my third book. So the story of the dragon yeah. is in my book. And he kind of makes sure I wrote the, the information correctly about the history of his family. So in fact, um, it was like a, a couple of years ago, he took a group of people in, uh, and his assistant to go back to China to this cave where his uh, grand descendant, the, the Yellow Emperor, practices his uh, spiritual alchemy and it was still there. And so that place is still there. And he has these uh, this crystal dragon pearl and it glows in the dark. And so when I held it, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful experience. And my wife was, was, was with me also. So he did some rituals and he did some oil on my third eye and he, I held it. And then all of a sudden I closed my eyes and then, then I, I kind of go back in time and I connected and, and saw visions of three important people. One was uh, Gautama Buddha, the, first, the Buddha. And then the one other one was a grand master, uh, master Ajang Li. He's a famous Thai Buddhist master. Yes. He's an arahant. Yeah. And, and the third one was the yellow emperor. Somehow there was a connection. Wow. And then my wife, when she held it, she felt like electricity in her hand. And then he did some ritual and so, some kind of towers ritual. And suddenly my consciousness and my wife's consciousness just merged together. It was weird. And then it's like, I, I, I lost myself and she lost yeah. herself. We became one consciousness for yeah, a while. Yeah, I get that. And all of a sudden, it was released. Then I came back to my body. It was like almost like a near-death experience. But when we left the body, we came went through that void, like the zero zone. Uh, you know, it's like the, she and I just became one. And then she went back to her body. And so the interesting thing about that is that suddenly she had this uh, psychic ability after that experience really? you know, with the dragon pearl. Yeah. And so you could see the power of it. And I could be like thousands of miles away. But my wife can tune into my consciousness and know how I felt, it's how like I was you guys feeling. Connected, like completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a birth of a twin flame phenomenon. You know, he, yeah. it's like he created that thing through that. Or process. Maybe you guys always were, and he just made you realize it. You know, like you know, because they say a lot of people are. You're, you know, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Me and my wife, we read each other's minds all the time. I mean, you know that that we are like, you know. Soulmates. Twin souls, soulmates, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff is yeah, so yeah. fascinating. I've always been drawn to Taoism and to Tibetan Buddhism. My mom got into is a Buddhist. Uh, oh, always oh. had a, 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 a. I don't subscribe to any one religion, uh, except yeah, yeah. For maybe Jedi Jediism, right? Uh, but, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> uh, but 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 I've always been drawn to it. And I mean, you know, we were talking about past lives. Uh, you know, one of my deeply moving visions I had wasn't. A, I, I have had a past life regression. That was a whole other thing. But I had two very vivid dreams of past lives, and one I was a Buddhist monk. Oh wow! Uh, I'm that's not so sure cool. where I had black robes. I had black robes. I know that, and all I know is in that in that vision is my the I guess the head of the temple had been misleading the group the the followers, mm -hmm. uh, and had an opium addiction, mm. and I ratted him out, and these soldiers show up with these rifles. And instead of taking him away, they just start killing everybody. And I go running for the, 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 the jungle. I'm like running through the jungle. And I, it all ends with me seeing them up on this ledge. They're in these gray-like uniforms. And bam, bam, bam. And I feel it hit my chest. And I wake up feeling wow. like sweating. Um, and I, you know, it explains a lot about why I've always been wired the way I'm wired. I don't have a trust for governments or religion. Organized religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would explain that. You know, uh, but um, but also my fascination with the Eastern philosophies. You know. Well, since you're into uh, Buddhism and uh, this topic is relevant, um, so I, I met this uh, Buddhist master uh, in my book, the third one, I call her Master Relica. She's from Thailand. 
and when she first met me, she saw the aura of the Buddhist aura around me, and she knew I was connected with her in the past life. So she gave me some of these uh, relics, the really big ones, and she told me to take it home and meditate with it. And after I meditate with it, I could see these Buddhist masters around me, and then I can tune into the past life. And I saw her, and we were friends in the past life. I remembered that. After That's that, awesome. she, she gave me these. Uh, if you can see these beads, let me, let me put you up they're on the screen sacred uh, Buddhist beads from Thailand, from the mountain oh, nice. called Sam Roy Yat. They're from two different sacred caves in Thailand. And um, they're very mystical. And you can't buy it. You have to get it from a Buddhist master. Her friend is also a Buddhist master that lives there in the caves. And these uh, Buddhist masters go there to attain liberation, ascension. And these caves grow these kind of these uh, crystals or balls in there. And they, they carve it out, these stones, and give it to Buddhist master. And it had, when people are psychic to tune into it, they can feel the consciousness of these, uh, these beads. Very powerful, protective energies. Anyways, and so we, we became friends. And so this master is remarkable because she once was given these, um, what do you call these things? Relics. You familiar with relics? Relics are kind of crystals that form uh, after the um, master the, or Buddha has been cremated. Usually right, it's dust, right? right. right? But the high masters, they have these relics. They can be crystals, they can be like stones, they can be different sizes and different colors. And one master in Thailand gave it to her, like seven of them, put in a container, and she brought it home. And one day she worked on her spiritual cultivation, meditation, and she saw orbs of light enter. In fact, I, I have one right here. Uh, oh, wow, that's pretty. Yeah, that, well, it's, I kind of want to spill it here. Yeah. You can see little crystals there, like, like grains oh, yeah, of yeah. rice. Yeah, I have a picture of that in my book. And so this is actually the um, relics of Gautama Buddha. And people say, how, how, how is it possible? Well, let me explain. So she got this thing, and then she put it in a container similar to the one I just showed you, and it, it, it screwed on, so it's uh, sealed. But after these orbs went in there and multiplied to like a 1,000 relics, and she would give them away, and they would multiply again. And that's wow. from Buddha. And then later on, other masters would appear. Other masters who were very close to Buddha, and they would materialize. Some would be shaped like hearts. Some would be really big ones. It's just thousands and thousands of them. But anyways, one day she she told me the story of um, her going to this place in Thailand. It's a very sacred mountain where these Buddhist masters, uh, they would meditate and connect with extraterrestrial beings, the enlightened and benevolent ones. And they would have these necklaces that they would wear and do the practices and do this, these beads. Somehow they yeah. would connect to the extraterrestrials. And so she didn't know why, but at that time she got two. She knew she had to get two. So after all those years, like decades later, she meets me and she says, you know, now I know why I was supposed to get two because this one belongs to you. So she gave it to me. And so normally I, when I go places, I would wear that if I want to connect with the extraterrestrial beings. And more often than not, I would have like an appearance of a UFO. And uh, I just found out recently that, that they, they use that to help them with the connection. So that was well, interesting. It definitely seems like, you know, in Tibetan Buddhism and Taoism and a lot of the Eastern philosophy, there's a, I mean, any heck you get in the Yellow Emperor, there's a lot of extraterrestrial connections there. You know? Yes, yes. I mean, I, I can point that out in Christianity. I, I I read the Bible, and I think it's a lot of ancient alien stuff going on. But in a mystical, spiritual sense, they seem to really more accept the idea of it. That's right. And then I want to say that, too. I mean, when you go into this mystical realm, you've got angels, you've got demons. Same, same thing for extraterrestrial beings. you got the ones that are benevolent ones. Then you have the ones that are darker, that's living in the planet, that's kind of orchestrating behind the scene. And so my friend who has a lot of experience with uh, dealing with these extraterrestrials all the time, he says, don't trust any of them. They all have their own agenda. Even though they appear to be good, they have their agenda. So I guess having said that, just say, trust in God. <laughs> you know, That's others true. Kind of I agree. Be, uh, I agree. Keep an open mind and be a little skeptical and, because they have their I, own I, agenda. I, I know I get contactees and I say, well, the ones I've talked to are really good. I'm like, I get it, but I, I still wouldn't trust the X-Files <laughs> taught me that. Trust no one. 
You know, and say, I, you know, who knows? But there, there does seem to be some afterlife aspect to what's going on here, oh, yeah, with like interdimensional sure. ETs. I mean, what, like I said, everybody thinks about like the ships, the technology, you know, all that stuff that they could be so far advanced on, but they forget that if they're so far advanced, millions of years even, that they're going to be spiritually advanced. They could be on a whole other dimensional right. level than us. But there's other, yeah. well, they're not the only, the, only a rodeo in town, obviously. There, there's other aliens here that are up to no good, too. Right, right. And it's interesting, my, my friend, the, the, the famous uh, psychic, she sent me an article recently about an astronaut. I think his name is Edgar Mitchell. He was one of oh, the... Oh, yeah, uh, late Edgar Mitchell, six, yes. Yeah, he, he talked about, the, I guess, 1945s. They were testing the nuclear bomb at White Sand in New Mexico, where my dad was. And he would say that the UFOs, because I think he's from, he's from the, the area... And, and he said that there's the UFOs that would come and disable the uh, technology there, or they would stop the missiles. And so I'm sure the the you know my my dad might have seen some of these things since he was working on the missile project. So yeah. they are definitely benevolent ones, and and they want to stop this process. And some people even say that well because of their intervention, that we didn't get into this whole big nuclear war with Russia. So because if that happens, you know all these nuclear things, it affects the I guess the universe too, and that's right. why they, they want to make sure that doesn't affect them too. But the big question is, will they intervene? I, I know. Well, that's what they did. They, says, they, they, well, in a sense, yeah. I they, mean, I, I've always said is the whole joke is that nobody has any nuclear weapons that they've shut them all down because you have instances like you're talking about, like Maelstrom, where they shut down the nuclear missiles. They completely shut them down. They had to like come yeah, bring yeah. in a whole crew of people to repair it and fix it all. You know, mm -hmm. like, and there's been other instances of that. You know, and obviously they've been hovering over nuclear power plants and. They have definitely right. vested interest in the in us not destroying this earth. But the question is, are they actually going <laughs> to, will they, it, it, you know, if it comes down to fisticuffs with us and Russia or whoever, are they actually going to intervene? I don't know. I Hard don't know. to say. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's hope we just don't have to come to that point, right? Right, right. You know, you know I, I'm a big Star Trek fan, and. In Star Trek, uh, you know, Gene Roddenberry and all them, they, I love Star Trek and all that, but uh, in that, Star Trek and the great civilization that exists in Star Trek, you know, that new uh, new kind of like a utopia idea of Star Trek only happens after World War Three, and we almost kill ourselves. You know, the Vulcans don't come down to Earth until uh, uh, after that point, after we somehow manage to survive all that and come up with warp drive. I, I think if we if we go to nuclear war like in Star Trek, you know, like Star Trek, there won't be somebody afterwards building a warp drive. I, I think we'll be gone <laughs> if we do that. You know, let's hope it doesn't come to that. That's that's my deal. But more people, like I said, are coming out. They're ha more open to talking about these experiences. Um, your books, you know, what what are the main things you want to get out to let people know about your three your your golden book series before we do well, lose you here in the next yeah. ten minutes or so? I want to make sure we get so that information. What I want to put out is that I didn't write these books. I mean, they're like downloaded information. So it's like I, I I'll start getting these downloads of wisdom, and I have to write it. If I don't, it just keeps circulating there until I actually put mm -hmm. it on paper. So uh, all these principles, you know. Um, in a, in a way, it's like channel information. So the universe is trying to teach us some lessons. So they teach me first. They give me these principles, and I integrate into my life, and I reach higher consciousness. So then I get this book, you know, the Dare to Imagine, 18 Principles for Peace, Happiness, and True Success. I thought I was finished, and then I went to this mystical journey, this mystical awakening, this connection with the ascended beings at Mount Shasta. So I've been working with them for a while, and they, they, they're teaching me. And the methods of how to do that so I can share with humanity. And then the third book, it, you know, I thought that was done and it, it happened before the uh, pandemic. And in retrospect, I think it was the universe's way to prepare humanity, given the tool, given the wisdom for evolving consciousness of the planet, given the tools to help them navigate through the, the crisis more gracefully. So this is all the message that the, the, the universe, the sentient beings are trying to share to humanity. So if we embrace that knowledge, we get longer life, happier life, and evolve the planet in a way that's uh, taking us away from chaos, bringing us to more of an enlightened civilization. So they're kind of working together as a trilogy. So the more people embrace these wisdom, the more they evolve, and the more we evolve, the more we can change the planetary consciousness because we, we can do that through the meditation process and do the techniques I've talked about in the book. But right now we're working on the different levels, you know, the legal level, the 
um, and the things we're talking about on social media to educate people, to bring their awareness, to awaken humanity. And I think that the benevolent extraterrestrial beings, the angelic realm, they're all trying to share this information of unity and wisdom. They're trying to open our minds so that we can evolve to be more advanced civilization. So that's my little it's, information. It's, it's pretty much all, everything that I've had contactees on this show say. That yeah. that's what they are being contacted. They're being mm -hmm. instructed, you know, that this is their purpose. They chose this life. They chose this incarnation to awaken people, to that's right. That's right. get people, get the message out there, you know, uh, that there is, there is some for, I mean, you could look at all the, the past religions, you know, you could look at, like I said, I see ancient aliens and all this stuff, but on a spiritual level, something's been trying to connect with humanity on a, on a conscious level. For thousands of years to awaken mm -hmm, us mm -hmm. and it That's hasn't right. quit it hasn't quit it's still trying it, it, and i think it's got a lot more clutter to get through in our modern day technology <laughs> and life that we have you know it's easy to say oh let's be spiritual peace love kumbaya that i gotta pay my bills and go to work and you know life gets you you know i remember when i was in my early 20s and i was really getting into like buddhism and spirituality and all these different things I'm like why do other people have these deep thoughts and get in, you know, meditate and get all this stuff. And I was young and 20. And then, and then I, you know, I grew up, got married, had kids. I'm like, oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> it's called life. It's not as easy, but I, I do see people searching for something more deeper meaning. And I see it on the, the people in the chat room and, you know, people that reach out to me that people are looking for deeper meaning and understanding why they're here. There are people, there are more people waking up to that idea, like not sucked into like a zombie to their phone and they're or like asking the big questions. Yeah, we have to help humanity to break through the matrix. And this matrix, yep. uh, this artificial intelligence is making it worse. So we're, we're embracing this artificial intelligent world. But we're, we're losing con connection to that divine intelligence. And that's where we need to be at. We need to connect to that and to see more clearly and to be more active in our life and our planet. I, well, I see that. I see. I, I think you connect when you're creative. And mm -hmm. the way right. AI is, it's like, oh, here, let AI do all the creativeness for you. Exactly. Exactly. Become a zombie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a tool. It can be used for good. You can. But it can also be used for bad, just like any other tool. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. And, and it's a very fast developed te technology, along with several other technologies that are developing really fast, like gene editing, uh, you know, super bug viruses being made, you know space travel our technology computer you know ai is going to change the world like we keep everybody saying well it, it already is and you know you already see it with uh you know they're talking about act i mean i i can see actors are gonna be out of jobs let alone all of us <laughs> That's because scary. you know literally they can just you know have it, it make an ai movie like there's no creative like there's, well, there's you don't know reality anymore i mean they can create right. a whole political situation and we believe it on tv but it's all ai so what's reality anymore? So you, yeah. you have to reconnect. To Remember the movie uh, Wag the Dog? Remember the movie Wag the Dog with Robert De Niro? Right. You know, in that, that they create a whole fake war. They create a whole yeah. fake war and everything with Canada or something. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Canada. I don't remember. They create, yeah, they create yeah. a whole fake war. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they create a whole fake war and all this stuff. I mean, like now, I mean, they really could do it. They can like it generally right. make a whole scenes and scenarios and none of it's really happening. That's right. And we're we're none the wiser. I mean, we're, that's the land of illusion that we're living in. That's why people believe that they're going to fake an alien uh, invasion, Project Bluebeam. Yeah, yeah, they're working on that. I mean, they create these uh, images, holographic images that look so real, and we think it's real. And uh, they can even use laser technology to cause some explosion or whatever. So we think there's a real AI threat out there. AI technology used to like, synchronize drones to do crazy stuff right, in the right. sky too. Exactly. Yeah, hologram exactly. technology. You know, or they are in cahoots with aliens and they're just going to, you know, let them invade or whatever. Or they'll become our new religion or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But well, it didn't happen with the, the eclipse, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But that's what I was saying before the show, too, is that we all, that's one thing I've noticed, though, we're after COVID especially, is that we're all kind of on our tippy toes with everything. Everything's, in, what's the next doomsday? I mean, it's being pumped in the media. There is a lot of fear porn going on out there, you know. Yeah, but we have and, to be careful, though. That's why I right. read the book. Uh, they, they feed off of that. I mean, there's uh, right. entities on the planet. There's people that feed on fear. So that's why we have to kind of shift it with our thought processes and know that they're creating these on, on purpose. 
to kind of divide us, to break us down. And that, that's how they learned to hijack humanity. And they've done that already yeah. in the past few years. So they're using that, they're using the things on the internet to kind of hijack cyber attacks. And then the third one would be the, um, with the extraterrestrial kind of, kind of scare us into submission. So they're gonna have, have, a, you, seen the, uh, have you seen Netflix's uh, three body problem? No, I haven't seen that. So it's a new series. I know we gotta let you go here soon, but uh, real quick, go watch it. I've watched some of it so far. It's a new series and basically the whole premise is that we live in a dark force, this universe. And it's, it's, you know, the survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. Everything's a threat out there. Again, like I said, it's trying, it's this whole ETs are coming and we're going to be screwed scenario. Right, right, right. You know, it's almost back to the war of the world scenario. Like we went through the war of the worlds, aliens are coming and invade us and kill us. And then we went to the Spielberg ET home phone home and close encounters like, Oh no, they're nice. And now we're back to the, you know, they're going to kill us again. Uh, you know, like, but it, it does seem like, you know, a lot of my contactees that I've had on say that they're trying to prep us to have this negative view of the aliens because yeah. that way they don't have, they don't influence us or control us when they finally are no denial that they're, they're here. Yeah, so one of the things that I recommend to people is like fasting and then for our health, but internet fasting, social media fasting, we need to get them yeah. for sometimes, Three. you know. Otherwise, we get so Definitely. indoctrinated and in fear, and then we, we can't do that. We need to get empowered and realize how much power that we have. I mean, just one person living in a state of enlightenment consciousness can affect millions of people. If you live in that state, if you live in a love consciousness, you can affect 150 to 750,000 people just living in that state of consciousness. And then anything you do on top of that is extra. But you know, the planet is consciousness. You know, there's a dark energy and light energy. And when we learn to tap into that uh, consciousness, we can affect it in a positive way rather than be helpless and kind of just watching for the next big thing that's gonna happen. I like to kind of co-create with the help of the extraterrestrial beings and with the help of the angelic beings with the archangels and God and so forth. You know, we, we're not just by ourselves, that, that we have forces out there that are working with us that are benevolent that want to help yeah, us right. grow exactly. and be better you know that that's the message I, I hear from all the contactees that they're trying to get out there so again thank you for sharing tonight and coming on i know we only had you for the hour but i'd love to get you back on in the future uh like any you know yeah. just let me know i'd love to get you back on thank you so much for being on the show tonight though thank you. check thank out you uh you, his golden book series which you can find uh what you say yeah, probably amazon all those places you can find your book series yeah. Easiest, but you know what? Uh, if you want to learn more about me and get my books, you can also go to SirBlakesAndClaire.com. We just released our website last week, and you have all my um, all my stuff. Jamie my books, got it in links. Bio. Yep. Yeah, Jamie put the you link in there. You want to talk to me for services, everything. You can reach me there or for media things. So I'd love to talk awesome. to you guys. Well, thank Stay you, Blake. Happy. You've been it's been an honor to have you on. Like I said, we'll get you back on the in the future. All right, guys, we're going to go to our uh, commercial break here. And then uh, hopefully if my phone lines are working, otherwise really short, short, short show tonight, we'll open up the phone lines, let you guys call in, have a little conversation, probably end the show early tonight. But we will be back after a short commercial break. effects of sensory deprivation and hallucinatory drugs. The subject of the experiment is himself, and the experiment is out of control. Ken Russell's Altered States, a film that must not be missed, is in the West End now. Altered States, Certificate X.
wish for more paranormal and spiritual content, the Paranormal Chronicles magazine is a free digital magazine crammed with the very best in paranormal and spiritual articles and features. No sign-up, no subscription, just free reading and knowledge for you. Read today at www.theparanormalchronicles.com forward slash magazine. Join us every Wednesday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time for Weird Wednesday at the live stream with your hosts Jamie, the Living Dead Girl, and Rob, the Phantom, where we'll talk about all things paranormal, including Zodiac, Astrology, Tarot Card and Oracle Card readings, live ghost boxing and spirit communication, where we'll do Voices from Beyond, the Gold Case Files. So we hope you join us live on Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Paranation Magazine is a new paranormal magazine based out of Denver, Colorado. Our goal isn't just to give you the best paranormal content out there, but to promote paranormal unity. We're doing this by giving everyone an opportunity to tell their stories and to share their experiences. For more information, follow us on Facebook at Paranation Magazine and soon ParanationMag.com. I've Never Met a Dead Person I Didn't Like is the extraordinary travels of a young, alone, and broke psychic in the highly anticipated new book from internationally renowned psychic, medium, medical intuitive, and best-selling author Sherry Dillard. Critics have described I've Never Met a Dead Person I Didn't Like as an engrossing memoir, an empowering story of how a broken girl came to accept her psychic gift, a refreshing and fun read. I've Never Met a Dead Person I Didn't Like is available through Amazon, Kindle, Barnes & Noble, and wherever books are sold. You wrote Spirits of the Dead with a pen dipped in warm blood. You will see the ultimate in terror with this important all-star cast. Brigitte Bardot, Alain Delon, Jane Fonda, Terence Stamp, and Peter Fonda in Edgar Allan Poe's Spirits of the Dead. Only Poe's demented genius could bring to the screen such horror and evil. Spirits of the Dead stars Brigitte Bardot, Alain Delon, Jane Fonda, Terence Stamp, and Peter Fonda. Directed by three masters of the cinema, Federico Fellini, Louis Mal, and Roger Vadim. Spirits of the Dead is an adventure in terror Beyond your wildest nightmares, Spirits of the Dead in color is rated R. The city is headed for a disaster of biblical proportion. Well, what do you mean, biblical? What he means is Old Testament, Mr. Yes. Mayor. Real wrath of God type stuff. Exactly. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. <laughs> bringing you the weird every Sunday night. Call into the show and join the discussion. The call-in lines are 219-230-4444 or 260-225-9419 or by Skype caller ID 00 jbland 00 or jbland paranormal suit. And now to your host, Jason Bland. Well, we have open lines tonight for a little while. We'll see. Call in tonight. We can talk about whatever. I mean, I, I had a friend of mine call in a couple weeks ago you know who you are wanted to talk about whatever his experience is i'm like wait that's not what the we got a guest that's not what the guest is talking about so that was your now now, now's your time you want to call in and talk about whatever anything goes pretty much please stay out of politics i don't care 
<laughs> I don't care about politics. But you want to talk about whatever, you know, especially, you know, if it's paranormal, that's what we're interested in. Call in. Join the conversation. We'll see how long it goes. We might only do about another half hour or so. Uh, next Sunday... I'm hoping we have a show. I had a guest res- have to reschedule. I don't know. We'll see if we have a show next Sunday, but we'll definitely be back the following week. But we'll see what happens tonight. We'll go for a little while, but let's go ahead and get back to the show. All right, phone lines should be open. Hopefully they work right. The connection's been really, I can't charge the phone I use to do the phone line, one of them, the main one. But it's the, you heard the audio coming through of Rob's voice there that I played. That was my audio test, so hopefully it's working. But the phone lines are open if you want to call in. Did you guys have any crazy, because uh, uh, I didn't get to watch Weird Wednesday uh, Eclipse stories? No, not really. Just um, the one I sent you showing a couple of things that people had seen. Yeah, and the NASA one. They explain that NASA one is that they purposely were taking a, a photo of a Korean uh, probe. Yeah, I was thinking Japanese, but yeah. I think it was Korean. I think it was a Korean probe. Everybody's done their probes up to the moon, like I've talked about. Like I said, it, it, you know, I, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid was uh, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Mm-hmm. My my kids love sci-fi, but they would never sit down through that. That's how big of a sci-fi nerd kid I was. Uh, I love Space Odyssey, man. Kids don't have that kind of attention span to sit through Stanley Kubrick's long, long, drawn-out musical like see you know like vast. Yeah. You know, you know they, they they won't make it through the first ten seconds of the Apes. You know, but I loved it. And on the moon, when they find the monolith, you know, like. It fascinated me as a kid, and I just think every time I hear about all these countries trying to send up their own probes to the moon, that that's it, man. That that's what that's the deadline that they know that's coming. That's going to reveal it all. If we really get back to the moon, the stuff that I've seen, the pictures of stuff on the moon that I've seen, would be undeniable. We start getting other countries that aren't going to care about saying, "Hey, we just found an alien mega structure." Did you happen to see that video? <clears throat> Of a shadow running behind some bleachers at a football stadium. Mm-mm. No, I didn't see that one. It's hard. I want to call shenanigans on it. Did you send that earlier this week? I'm showing. I'm sending it right now, but. Okay. See, I've seen a lot of these at stadiums sometimes. We had one we showed years ago that was at a stadium. There's just something weird about the way it looks like when it's by the tree. And it's super fast. Yeah. That's just like the, this is from, she's got this from the sun.com. I can't share it right now because I don't have it set up. Um, But remember we showed one years ago and it was just like that. It was super fast. So I, I'm not taking this. This edited. came from the t- the TV footage in Bolivia. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, it's very similar to the one that we showed years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a fast moving shadow in the, ble- the bleachers that it's running by, like going super like so fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess shadow people want to watch you know football games too. I don't know. Wait, did somebody try calling? <laughs> like, did somebody try calling? You want to call it at my show? <laughs> I don't know. No. Fake we, me out. We've got a moon racer, lunar buggy, shortlisted for NASA's Artemis 5 mission. Do you think we're actually going to do it, though? No. I don't know. I can see us going back to the moon. We should be. Why didn't we? Why did we leave the moon, you know? But I don't know. I, I I think they could already be doing it, but if they do, as far as we know, no, they're, they're not going. They could already they have pushing labs it back. set up right now, and we just don't know it. Well, I, I think we definitely could have something on the moon already. I'm saying that we'll officially, like NASA's going back there. 
Like yeah. I say, there are Artemis and everything that happens. We'll see. It's like my doubts for the whole moon. Like Elon Musk's picture sending a million people to the moon in 20 years. I mean, really? Or not the moon, to the to Mars. I, I just, how do you survive the radiation conditions there? That, that's my question. You're bombarded with, they don't, it, Mars does not have the magnetosphere that we do. It, everything that they build there to shield, they will have to shield people from the radiation there. And that's not easy. I'm seeing especially, the, yeah. I'm seeing the commercials for the shows that they're starting to play for um, space exploration and getting people ready, like like a little girl saying, "Oh, just be amazing to see the Earth from you know space," and getting people ready for space traveling. Yeah. Or maybe it's like, "Hey, everybody's got to get off the planet." Mm -hmm. Too many people, or you know, I've seen so many sci-fi shows. We're going to space. I mean, yeah, none of those are good scenarios. No. Now for me. All right, let me test out this phone line. Hopefully it's working. Who do we got on the line? Hi, Jason. It's Azarianna. Can hey, you hear me? Yes, I hear you, and it's working. You hear me? Yes, I do. Okay, it's yes, working. Yes, I do. All right. Awesome. Yes, I do. Thank you for calling in. Excellent. You get to test out this phone line. That's been wonky. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for Dan, or is her name Andrine, or Adrian? I don't know the other one. <laughs> Adrian. <are> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Royal, maybe. I haven't yeah, heard, I haven't from heard Royal, from Royal in a while. He's yeah, in the chat room. Yeah. Hi, Royal. He was a minute ago. Uh, yeah, call in Royal. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to kind of bring up is um, since the eclipse, the energy, well, for me, but I don't know about other people, but I, I kind of been bouncing around like... Uh, weird you know like, uh, it was a great day for okay. me I, like i had the day off my sons we kept home from mm. school because my wife like i said <laughs> was a little scared about it because stuff happening but either way we wanted to spend it with them and i'm glad we did because it was beautiful it was a beautiful day and i mean we were we didn't go travel down to see the full thing but uh you know it was my my sons were so young in 2017 you know liam was barely one and you know and dean was four or five and uh so th it was cool to get to see it with them it felt great. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. No, I I've, I've just been wondering because like I just like feel like I'm bouncing all over the place and because of this energy, you know, it's almost like a uh pardon my word but high, you know. Mm -hmm. And um uh it's kind of like I've been activated between messages and uh, different gifts and things that I've been seeing and, you know, stuff. Your guest was saying something about an awakening. I a think. lot of my guests have been and, saying that, but yes. You're probably being downloaded yeah. with a lot right now also. There's a lot of downloads happening. I find it interesting. Definitely. I kept joking to my sons. I was like, you know. The one reason I kept them, you know, they might, might, Dean, I shouldn't have to worry about. That kid was so paranoid he was going to accidentally look at the sun. But, uh, but you know, like I kept them home because I wanted some, you know, like I dare you to look at the sun with their other kid, you know, the other kids or something like that. But I kept joking with them. I'm like, oh, wait, you might get superpowers because I'm a big fan of a show, Heroes. Remember that there was a show in the 2000s mm -hmm. and it, it all starts with, you yep. know, these guys get their superpower from the eclipse. They see the, the eclipse happens and everybody starts waking up with superpowers. They're actually going to bring that show back mm -hmm. again because after the eclipse, there's like renewed interest in that show. First season was awesome. Wow. But wow. I don't know. Maybe yep. people are, maybe it was like a, a time. Maybe we will, I mean, people are getting downloads or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, the other question I have is if everybody is awakening now, because of the not eclipse everyone. or whatever, but if well, well, okay, not everybody, but <laughs> um, the the ones that are, do you think the government? I mean, we all know the answer, but the government should wake up. You know, the government should realize there's other stuff out there. Well, they that, might they might be totally awake. They don't care. That they, 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 it's against their best interest. <laughs> you know. They might be totally aware of it all, but it's against their best interest for control. Yeah, that's true. Well, like I say, we're we're fleas on ants on 
Please. Listen, if everybody <laughs> like, even... if everybody like certainly have an awakening and like, it, 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 especially, you know, you talk to the contactees, they want people to become more conscious, higher level and telepathy is a big thing, right? With the like, alien contactees that they speak with telepathy. If everybody started developing telepathy, there'd be no more bull crap between people anymore. No more lies. And that's a big problem for a government that con and media that constantly lies to people. If everybody could just start telepathy or connecting to a higher consciousness and knowing they're full of crap. Mm, mm, true. And, and true. if I mean, that's why I think remote viewing was sh shut down so quickly by our government in the '90s uh, when it got public. That oh, we're done with it. We're not doing that anymore. Because the truth of it is, if it is real and anybody can do it, that 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 in a sense is to see through the lies. If you can remote, you can remote view. You can go see where they. And this has happened to remote viewers. We got plenty of testimony to this you can see where the alien bases are you can see they're on the moon you can see they're in the mount shasta you know you can see through the bullcrap if you can access <laughs> remote viewing you can see through all their lies mm -hmm. oh yeah that's that's another uh topic uh, i saw a show on mount shasta and um the native americans or the people the tribal people were highly offended because they consider it sacred land and all these other people want to climb it and uh, camp there and whatever else. Well, I've there's never like been whole spiritual there. festivals there. Yeah. There's there's a ta there's a town that's completely like a it's new age beautiful town. Beautiful there. You know, the you know, water it, stinging. But yeah, it's Native American land. Should be. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you know. Uh, like I said, I certainly you know probably won't go there, but. I mean, you know, it's kind I'd of. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to see it. I'd love you, Jamie. You've been there. You know what's it like? I'd love to go to Mount Shasta. It's just mm. crisp and beautiful. Yeah. A lot of Native Americans actually find it disrespectful to watch the eclipse. Also, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't want people on any of their land to do so, and they go in and um, I don't know which you know set tribes or whoever does right. there were ones close the blinds close the curtains and just wait inside well, passes well you gotta imagine i mean it, for cultures thousands of years ago when eclipse was happened you know that's what they were doing they you know they didn't under if they didn't understand it thousand years ago thousand years ago that's what they were doing they were hunkering down oh my god the sun just disappeared well they have like a belief like mm -hmm. a respect thing like yeah not to watch it or just the they yeah. learned when people did some people went blind you know because <laughs> that's why you lock yourself yeah. down because they didn't have nice little glasses like my, my wife bought the whole kit and my next door neighbor's out there with her husband and they're both like doing this i'm like uh do you have glasses nah i'm like hey, i got some pairs for it. here here you go take those don't don't look at the sun please <laughs> you know yeah yeah no that's that's the other thing if if they find it disrespectful um you know for their for their ancestors or tri the, the tribal people do they are there any issues do they give people issues that go there no I I just, the if, if you're polite and you're being respectful um you know they're they're just not gonna mess with you a lot of witches there's a lot of back and forth that comes with um paganism and things like that too whether you use that energy to cast spells and try to manifest or you don't because the chaos of the eclipse and oh you know there was some spell spell magic going on that day you know, oh, but you, you know, know there like was people that get it all you do not do this blah blah, blah. it's up to you what you know it's your thing what you feel comfortable mm -hmm. with what you want to do but i think yeah right. yeah very interesting very interesting yeah so i hope you get more calls <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know how much longer we'll go we'll see like i said it'll probably be a short night i got tomorrow like i'm dying already because <clears throat> i have a crown or a temporary on right now and it cracked so every so often i get air in there and it oh. hits the nerve and it just happened <laughs> mm. like, and I, i'm getting that tomorrow i have a dentist appointment chiropractor appointment tomorrow so me going to bed early tonight probably is a good deal <laughs> because I got yeah, yeah. I got so much uh, going on tomorrow, sadly. Um, yeah, but I feel well, bad because I might not have a show next week. I don't know. I mean, I don't see. Obviously, I don't get calls to carry a whole open line show like Art used to. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, blessings to you. 
families and feel better and hopefully there's a show hopefully there's a show wednesday <laughs> i look there's, forward to wednesdays too there's oh, a show yeah. in San sure. it, it, yeah should be weird wednesday and uh, maybe a paranormal soup sunday we'll see well thank you so much for calling in okay thank you Happy thank you well. good night Bye. good night actually i think i got for people that don't follow me on facebook that's fine you know, I don't really get on Facebook a lot, except for to post pictures of my kids. I got, where is it? I just put it in here. There it is. The that little towel on his bed was so cute. Oh, I saw that the other day. That was them out there in the eclipse. I'm glad I got to spend it with them. My mom said she spent it with her dad, my grandpa. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm just, you know, I'm glad I took the day and spent it with them. It's such, we couldn't ask for a more beautiful day. My That's wife got home about. from work just in time for it. She These bought are this the whole kit. It's about. Yep, exactly. Because they'll always remember. I saw that clip with my dad, and mom. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't do it. You know, like I, I had people that went down south. You know, friends that went down south of Indiana. You know, in southern Indiana, where, where the path of it was the totality, whatever. And uh, my one boss, he had like a great. He had. He was all set up. He had like the the photo camera ready for it. He got such a good video of it. Oh, man. It would be cool to see. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Good. How are you, Jason? Doing good. Hey, Thanks Dan. for calling in, bud. Um, yeah, I was going to just talk to you. I don't know if you're familiar with the the Gateway Experience or the, the tapes, the CIA tapes. I've heard. Oh, you were sharing some of that. Yeah, a little bit. I've heard some of it. Yeah. Um, as far as meditation goes, it's uh, it's a really interesting experience. You should, you should give it a try. But I haven't made it through all the tapes, but um, but these are like like they're the CIA's like guiding tapes, the remote view kind of like whatever. Or yeah, basically, yeah. Um, there's actually been a page missing from the document for a long time. I think it was page 25 or something, yeah, but I that. heard that it recently been released and uh, I didn't read it or anything yet, but uh, yeah. So you're trying these meditations? Um, yeah. You're like trying them? I work them into you know, other things I do every now and then. It's, yeah. it's a really good relaxer for sure, especially the Yeah, the but are, tape. like, so do you feel like it's like, um, you're, you're are you like doing it like remote viewing like are you seeing other things you think or think it's helping you well that's the way it's presented and in, in sound there's a lot going on it starts with ocean waves and there's like static and then they start playing a tone in one ear and one in the other and then they merge those together and when they start doing that stuff you know that's when it starts to affect me because the tones will start to get this rhythmic pattern after a while. I just don't hear them anymore. Yeah. I just hear voices talking to me and myself talking to myself pretty much. And it's a trip. The more you do it, the better, you know, the better it works. But, I, you know, I, um, I, am, I, am, eventually, interested. I am interested in trying it. I, I am. I've, I've tried doing some remote viewing. I've, you know, I've done meditation, all that stuff. I would definitely be it. Interesting. Using sounds um, and like that, I've always thought, you know, definitely could get yourself. I mean, we all know that sounds and that your body can respond to your mind and you get yourself in an altered state. Yes. And music can do the same thing uh, by eerily, you know, if it's presented right. But um, I've wanted to try eventually. Those well, the things. The furthest I got is. is Phase 10, where you're supposed to be able to tap your fingers on the back of your neck and say the number 10, and it's supposed to put you instantly into that uh, state. Uh, so you don't need yeah. any of the guidance anymore. You just you got yourself there. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. And there, there's quite a quite a bit of tapes. I'd like to spend a day just going where through Where are you getting access to this tape? Is it a website or YouTube, or where are you doing it? Um, you can get them on YouTube commercial free, or you can find them in a lot of places commercial free. So you, you don't want to get interrupted during it with, with commercials. And what people, what do people yeah. look up? Uh, CIA gateway process? Is it something like that? Um, yeah, the the gateway process. It's all about Hemisync, you know, yeah. getting your brain. Yeah, yeah. 
I definitely believe the thing. CIA. And I mean, then, you, definitely they got into that. They got into all that with the remote viewer, you know, remote yeah. viewing program. And then they wanted, see, they had people who are natural remote viewers, like, um, oh, uh, oh, what am I thinking? I'm totally forgetting his name. They had a, a weird name. Uh, I mean, there's a number of them, but, um, oh, the guy who did the moon. Uh, oh, I can't think of his name now. Totally blanking. Somebody in the chat room will get it. You should know. Oh, Indigo Swan. Right, something like that. You know, like that guy had the natural ability to do it. And then here he is, like seeing aliens on the moon and stuff like that. They wanted people that they could train that were already committed to the military or gonna sign non disclosure agreements, not just people that have the ability naturally. They wanted to be able to train people they could control to do it. And that's what the remote viewing process. You ever seen the movie The Menesteric Goats? <laughs> uh no. Go see that movie. It's a comedy, but it, it it's loosely based <laughs> on what they were doing. You're basically men and goats because they try to kill a goat by staring at it. <laughs> but it, the truth is, is we were doing this. I mean, we and I think we never stopped, honestly. If you do listen to it, you'll find its audio is is interesting. The way the the waves that it starts with, and then yeah. the guy's voice is unsettling as well. Something off about it, but it, I think it's all designed to be that pace in that way. I don't know. Get your mind in that altered yeah, state. Give it, yeah, I give it a shot, man. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. I'll definitely have to check it out. For sure. But, you know, Maybe the last several guests have been long, alien contactees. The last several guests have been alien contactees. How are you feeling, Dan, about your own experiences? Do you think these last several guests have enlightened you or helped you or any way in your experiences? Yeah. Yeah, some definitely confirming some things that I was doubting, I guess. I hope so. I mean, that's, you know, I'm trying to figure out my own experiences, too. You know, we've talked about it. I, I That's why I've, like, last, you know, I've been looking for more guests that are experiencers to have on the show. I, I've said that, you know, I told this to, uh, I think, Nancy Thames was on last week. I'm like, you know people, let them know. I want them to come on. I want people to share these experiences. It's never old to me. I want I want more and more. Because the more we compare notes, the more we might have an understanding of what's going on here. Um, you know, the the triangle thing I told you, I mean, I got it down pretty well, but there's still a moment where I ended up outside twice and I can't figure it out. It's just empty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just... I remember know. being outside once and back inside and then back outside. Well, you remember more than I do of stuff. I, I, I have very vague glimpses of things. I don't know if their dreams are real or not. I question it still, you know. I, I think you really yeah. are, you know, diving deep into it, so that's awesome. Yeah, and, you know, with PTSD, these things just naturally emerge from time to time. <laughs> well, keep calling in and sharing things. with these, these guests, Dan, because I, I like them to hear your experiences. Same with everybody else, um, because, like I said, we got to compare notes. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for calling in, Dan. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Again. You, you too, bud. All right. Keep phone lines open for a few more minutes. We'll see if we got anybody else, and then we might call it early tonight. Ugh. Like I said, crack crown. Ugh. It's like a temporary. They had to, like, numb me five times. I've never had to have five shots to numb oh. uh, uh, for uh, uh, to get a crown, you know, drilled. But some way there must be um, a, a nerve or close to on that 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 molar, uh, because they were like, "Raise your hand if uh, you feel anything." I'm like, uh, uh, you know, and they had to keep giving me more. And by the time it's done, I'd had five shots. I was numb for like four hours, oh. and I still felt it. By the fifth shot, by the fifth shot, I said, "Screw it! I'm just gonna." I just grabbed the chair and I just would get the little like I could just. It was like, oh, it was like, oh, just dull like nerve pain happening and i'm just like just get this over with and the worst part about the worst part about it wasn't actually the the pain it was this this new device they had and i think i talked about this last week because i i they put this thing in my mouth to hold it open and it blows air in there uh -uh. Yeah. and i swear to god i i kind of mentioned this last week 
I had closed my eyes. I'm like doing my trying to breathe, breathe, not think about it, not think about the nerve pain. And as that jolt of pain has happened, I see this gray alien face form in the black of my vision. And I started getting this huge anxiety. I had to like raise my hand. Like, you're still feeling pain? I'm like, no, I just, I just need a minute. I just need a minute. I swear, I mean, I don't know. I had a horrible de a dentist experience when I had my wisdom teeth out. That I always blamed on my reason for never wanting to go to the dentist. But I also, I swear, I got, I've always had anxiety, maybe because of the things. Like I said, I had that one dream where they were putting something down my throat. And they're trying to call me. You know, I was like, when I was sick, you know, is that related? Is that why I, I fear the dentist so bad? And I, I have so much anxiety about tomorrow, you don't even know. You don't even know. Like, I am so worried about, like, how much pain I'm going to go through. Because last time I went, they couldn't get the temporary off. And they were like, well, we just need to topically numb it. And we'll pull it off. You don't have to get shots today. I'm like, thank God, because I hate the needle part, you know. I didn't have They had to give me the shot. They had to give me the shot because they couldn't get it off. So they had to like, drill it, drill it off. Well, this time I'd be like, I think you better give me the shot. Because I'm afraid for them to even touch it to take that temporary off. That's how how bad that nerve pain is there. I didn't have insurance. <clears throat> I had to go to a free clinic. I couldn't get numbed. I couldn't get anything. Mm -hmm. I had to sit there while they were training people to use a scooper and pliers oh, and pop it out while you're no, laying in no. beds with a whole bunch of other people laying no. in beds next to you. Oh, no. And TV cameras going around. They're barbarically ripping teeth out of people's oh, my heads. God. I started gripping the table looking like I was in pain because um, I figured they wouldn't put it on TV then and they didn't. But like part of my row did show up. So I'm like, I don't want to be on TV like this. But I totally. Look at all these poor people who have to get this crappy dental done. Here, let's put it on TV. Mm -hmm. Like, Asshole. come on down to the free, you know, one day yeah. seminar. But I, I get anxiety. I totally feel your fear, man. I was just like, I, I know I'm have tr I, I need to go to bed early because I'm going to have trouble falling asleep tonight because I keep thinking about this stupid dental mm -hmm. thing. I have even had drink, I, the last all week, all week I've had at least one or two dreams like every night about the damn dentist and this whole thing. And me going, wait, wait, stop, stop. There's nerve pain. And you know, like the whole thing, like the, oh. It'll be it's five like, in the morning and you're going to be like getting ready and getting up. Like, all right, let's just go get this stuff over with. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't bad when I was a kid. It didn't, it didn't scare it, but I, I definitely know the wisdom teeth scenario I had was a nightmare, and that definitely ruined me on it. But yeah, it was around that same time good. when I was starting, to, I was 17 then, I think. And it was at the same time around the time I had the whole camping trip incident that might have been alien related and the shadow person and then other weird stuff. So I don't know if it's related or not, or it's just because of the wisdom teeth thing. But definitely when they say abductees hate the dentist, I, it's definitely one of the check marks I got. I, I definitely fear the dentist. I, it, it, I have such anxiety about it. So I'll probably end the show there because I'm going to try to get myself to go to sleep as hard as that's going to be. On that note. On that note. But uh, we, I, I'll let you guys know later this week if we're going to do a show. If I can't get a guest, um, I'm probably not going to do a show. You know, I love you guys calling in, but I don't have enough people to watch to, like, fill the whole three hours with people calling in. Like, I don't even have it for tonight. So we'll be back, if not next week, the following. I got guests lined up for at least the next couple months here. So we should be good. Thanks to everybody who's watched. We will be back in probably a couple weeks, if not next week. Uh, thank you to everybody who shares out the show. Keep telling your friends about Paranormal Soup with Weird Happens Live every Sunday night, 10 p.m., Central, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. specific time, and for however long I feel like, right? <laughs> Sorry, Renee, I didn't go the three hours tonight, but like I said, I, I knew the guest only had an hour, and I probably wasn't going to be able to fill it. Next week, if I can't find a guest, no show, and then we'll be back the following Sunday. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Follow and subscribe. Don't forget we're on Patreon. You can donate $1 a month, $2 a month, $5 a month. Anything helps pay the bills for the show. All right, guys, have a great night. Hopefully see you next week or in a couple weeks. See you then. Thank you.